Hello, everyone, and welcome in today's this show. I'm very much glad uh, that most of people are already here who have registered for this today's session. And uh, certainly, uh, in next one minute, we will be on the way to talk about this exclusive session, which is where we are going to talk about CV writing skills. Uh, just one minute, and after that, we are going to quickly start it. All the people who are interested to ask live questions, as I said, that they can follow the link and they can stay connected with me and my team will allow them in the studio and they can join us. So it's the time to start our today's this show, which is all about CV writing. Uh, let me welcome everyone who is joining us and watching us live from different parts of the world, starting from uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, here in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, UAE, across the world, and especially those people who joined us and registered from uh, Ghana, Cameroon, and Kenya. So um, it's my pleasure to welcome every one of you, and I'm very much thankful to a couple of people and organization. I would definitely love to mention their names. Uh, Pakistanis in Dubai, PID. Uh, which is uh, very much helpful to organize these sessions, helping Pakistani communities uh, in UAE. As well as from Bangladesh, we have got SSDC, which is Soft Skills Development Center. Uh, I'm thankful to them also. And from Pakistan, Talimo uh, is the educational organization which organizes such sessions. And I'm very much thankful that they uh, spread the message and let their audience and their students, their members join in today's this live session. So uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Adnan Sohail. I'm Dubai based a learning and career advisor, soft skills trainer, as well as a professional development coach. It's been over 11 years I'm based here in Dubai and I have worked with uh, Forbes top 500 companies as well as I do work currently with individuals as well as with recruiters, people who are looking for a job and people who are hiring candidates. So that's an amazing mix of two things that I can understand what is the need of those people who are looking for a job and what is the demand of those people who are going to hire people. So I believe that we, with, with which uh, this combination uh, I'm glad that I'll be able to share with you some good tips. Uh, most recently, I ran some surveys, done some researches, conducted some interviews with recruiters, with HR managers, and I could understand that what exactly they are looking for. So this is exactly what we are going to talk in today's this session. Um, let's have some ground rules. This session is going to be for one hour. And in, in this one hour, I'm going to tell you uh, those secrets, those tips, and I will walk you through the different sections of your CV or resume that how to prepare that. But in the same time, last 15 to 30 minutes will be for the question and answer session. And anyone who wants to join us live, uh, they can also follow the link which your administration must have provided you. You can follow those links and you can join. You can come alive with me, uh, with the camera, with Mike, and you can ask a question. Otherwise, platform is absolutely open anytime. You can just uh, drop a comment, drop a message, and you can ask uh, any question which you have. So, um, I'm glad to see a lot of people have joined us from the different part of the world. Uh, all right. So Tanvir Galman, then is uh, Prasanjit Ghosh, uh, Ome Habiba, then a uh, dear friend from Bangladesh is uh, Jahidul Islam. Uh, Mahadur Islam is also there. So I'm glad to see all of you people here. All right, so interesting topic. I can guarantee you that you must be having a lot and a lot of questions to ask me. So as I was sharing with you, what are the rules which we will follow one hour to deliver the session? 
and I would definitely want you, every one of you, want. I want you, every one of you, to give maximum of your attention. And once this is over, I will do my part. After every 15 minutes, we will take a break of one minute to take your question or to share your, you can share your thoughts or you just want to grab a glass of water or a cup of tea. So it's totally up to you. Uh, so one to two, two minute break after every 15 minutes. Please switch off or at least keep your mobile phone as well as your social media, your emails on silent during this one hour. Uh, it's going to be important and I want you to follow every single piece which I'm going to tell you here. And after that, uh, I will take your questions. So uh, thank you once again, everyone, for joining me in today's this session. Uh, as you might have seen in the advertisement over social media or emails which you have received, or the management of your countries, any organization like SSDC, Talimo, or Pakistanis in Dubai, the organizer, they must have shared with you what are the learning outcomes. So let me quickly share with you uh, what exactly you are going to get from today's this session. I want you, first of all, to understand what is the difference between CV and resume. A lot of people are just confused on this thing. And today I'll try to explain to you. And in the same time, I'll tell you that what exactly you should use in, in different uh, settings. Secondly, we will talk about recruiters. We'll try to understand what is the mindset of a recruiter when a CV, a piece of paper comes in front of them. So first of all, what are those things which they try to look on that? What attracts them immediately? But at the same time, we will talk about those mistakes, those points or those errors which make them just annoyed and they don't feel comfortable to keep on going through that CV and they just just uh, put it on the table or throw it in the trash bin. And I don't want your CV should go in the trash bin. We will also talk about uh, what are the secrets of a winning CV. Uh, what is ideal CV in simple words? We will talk about and go through the different sections starting from top till the end, which sections you need to complete and what should be its length and how it should look like uh, while you complete your CV. Uh, important terminologies, you must have heard about two things. One is uh, customization and other one is optimization. So I will unveil this secret also that what do you what is exactly meaning of customization as well as optimization and what is its role when you are applying for a job and your CV goes in front of the recruiter. We will talk about what sort of formatting you should have on your CV. And last two things quickly, we will talk about gaps. If you have quit already your job or due to COVID or any circumstances, there is a gap on your CV or you are a fresher, uh, you just finished your university, what sort of CV must be there? How to handle the gaps for experienced people, but in the same time, for freshers, how to write a CV when you do not have a lot of experience to showcase on that thing. So I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your interest that you came here. But in the same time, I want you to give maximum of your attention uh, so that you can uh, keep watching and not only just to watch and sit in front of this screen but even to ask me the question and understand thing and when every point i'll keep on telling because everyone is different from other people so try to relate it with your career progression try to relate it with your career plans try to relate it with the job where you are going to apply now or after a week or after 10 days so uh, these are the things which I definitely wanted to tell you before we start our session. This is our learning outcomes of today. So everyone who is joining, thank you so much. I'm seeing your comments. That's very much interesting for me. And I appreciate joining from, as I said, from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, from Nepal. Someone is there. Um, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Kenya, Cameroon. Uh, Qatar, some people, someone is there. So any and everyone who is joining me, I truly uh, am thankful to you. So now 
one thing I need to make it clear that this is what I told you before that what this session is all about. But I also need to tell you what this session is not about. So that from the beginning, your expectations about this session should be very much clear. And after that, only those people who are really, really looking for CV writing, they should stay with us and they should keep on watching. So this session is not going to cover this point, how to get a job in Dubai. A lot of people will ask, throw questions. I see in such sessions, people bombard questions asking how to get a job in Dubai. Can you please write a CV for me? What kind of jobs are available in Dubai? I'm looking for a job. Can you please help me? What is LinkedIn? What is personal branding? How to create a LinkedIn profile? How to write a CV? How to write a cover letter? What is the best time to come to Dubai in order to search a job? So this session is not going to answer any of these questions. So this was the ground rules. We talked about the timing. We talked about what I'm going to cover. And we talked about what I'm not going to cover in this session. So let's start with the first important thing. And that is a difference between CV and resume. What is CV or curriculum vitae? Your CV is an in-depth document which describes the whole journey of your career. Starting from beginning till end, you write every single thing on that. There is no limit of number of pages, but ideally it is a two to three page. So this is called CV. The other thing is a resume. Resume is a brief document. In ideal world, it should not be more than two pages, but the best resume is if you write a single page. This is a brief overview of your work history as well as your education. So, for example, you are a PhD, like you have done doctorate in any given subject, so a lot of articles which you have written, you do not have to put it on your resume and making it a list of two or three pages. But you can just write that what was the title of your publishing. In the same time, you can just talk about your work experience uh, instead of focusing a lot on your education. So two things very much clear. CV is a longer version. Resume is a shorter version. CV can be up to 10 pages even. For example, if you're applying for immigration or there are any certain roles which require a detailed information from you about you, then you'll write your CV. Otherwise, you will write your resume. Now, the question is this, as a job seeker, what you should write? Should you write it CV or you should write a resume? And the answer is straightforward. Who cares about it? As a job seeker, you are looking for a job. You don't need to get confused in this thing that should I call it a resume or should I call it a CV? Whatever you want to write, just write it and present it in a way as it should be appealing for your recruiter. Go for that one. So this was the important, important thing. Do not, I, I have seen a lot of people come to me asking that should I write a CV or should I write resume? This is not a concern. The concern is what you are writing on that CV or resume. That's more important thing. So I believe that now you are clear about CV and resume. So now let's, let's move to uh, our next point, which I want to talk today. Uh, after understanding what is CV and what is your resume. Uh, quickly, I would like to tell you, you might have heard one word, profile. What is a profile? Your profile is a 24-7 digital billboard. For example, you have created your account on Indeed or Monster or LinkedIn or Glassdoor or any other given job board. You created your profile there. You completed different sections. Now that's online. 
that's a 24 7 billboard anyone anytime can go and just look into that one and understand who you are so you have to be a lot more conscious about your profile because cv is the document which when you send to someone they will see you but your profile is something which is 24 7 available whether it's your social media platforms profiles or your job boards or your linkedin profile anytime anyone can see it so you need to be more careful what is available on your billboard which anyone who is passing from the street they are able to watch able to read and make impression that who you are and related to this is personal branding i'm sure that a lot of you people have heard this thing personal branding personal branding and i must say that it is a lot of there is a lot of importance of personal branding in today's world so what is personal branding your personal branding is an impression your personal branding is something people talk about you or when you are not available there so in your absence how people talk about you how people relate you to something your specialty your skills your knowledge what people are relating with you why people are calling you specialized or they associate you with that particular thing that's your personal brand and i cannot make these separate from each other because in today's world your cv is the document when you send that's a marketing tool and they will look at that and decide they need to call you for interview or they should not call you for interview but your profile and your personal brand anyone can see across the world anytime so you have to be extra conscious on those things that what you have posted online what type of content you add on your social media on your online job portal as well as platforms and what achievements you have what type of keywords you have used so that you can appear in google and linkedin and other searches again and again let's move to the next section and after that i will give you a break of one minute and this is the third point which i want to talk in today's this session what when your cv reaches in front of the recruiter what they notice on that immediately the first thing where their eyes and their glance first of all jump on those things what those one two three things they notice but before your cv will reach in the hands of a human being there is a one ghost there is a giant there is something which is called ats applicant tracking system or applicant tracking software it's an artificially intelligent software. Look, you need to understand what is the life and job of a recruiter. And then according to that, you have to prepare. Consider that you are going to have a fight with someone. And if you know that who is your opponent, your preparations will be better as compared to that. You do not know absolutely who is your uh, op opponent then your preparations will not be according to that so we will talk about this thing so i just wanted to mention here that before cv reaches to the hands of a human being it passes through it filtered by ats and the way how AT, ats filters it it uses artificial intelligence where recruiter gives the description of the job keywords roles job uh, experience of the person required and then according to that all the cvs which comes to them they simply filter through ats so 95 96 percent organizations these days the larger organizations they use applicant tracking system and at that point almost 90 percent plus cvs are filters and just go to trash and only eight to ten percent reaches in the hands of a human being now first thing 
which they notice once the CV comes in their hands. That's the length of the CV. How long is your CV? That's the very first thing. If your CV is six pages, five pages, four pages, you are not a good friend of your recruiter. If your CV is one pager, you are the good friend of your recruiter. Let me tell you one example. If I give you a book which has 100 pages, and if I give you a one leaflet or flyer, which is just a single side A4 size page, right? And I ask you to read both of these and tell me its summary. What you will pick first to read and give me summary? The answer is super obvious. You will pick the first, which is a summarized one, which is shorter one, and you will pick that single page. You will read that and you will give its answer that, oh, yes, this is written on this one. Look, your recruiters are also human beings. They use the same approach. The brief CV is their ideal CV. So first thing is your CV's length, which is noticed. And as we talked before, it should not be, again, I'm using the word here CV because it's quick. Otherwise, I can say resume also. But we are talking about whether it's a CV or a resume, it should not be more than one to two, two pages. Two pages is maximum, right? The second thing which they notice or circle or immediately they see on your resume, that is about your past or most recent work experience. The organization where you are working right now, what is your job title? What is your achievement there? What you are responsible there? So this is the second thing they see that what is your experience? Which organization you are working for? Number three, they see what kind of achievements throughout your career you have. For example, you have worked for three companies, four companies, two companies. So what type of achievements do you have there? What did you earn? Which, what value you have created for that organization? That's a very much important thing. And when I say achievements, it's not that you have done Microsoft Office course or you have attended a leadership training program or you have went through a software development training or you have done some Google certification. I'm not talking about these achievements. I'm talking about your real accomplishments, achievements, whenever you are working for any organization against your role, your job, there were some responsibilities to complete. And against those responsibilities, there was some KPIs, key performance indicators that if you will do this, you will achieve this. And if you will not be able to do this, you will not achieve this. So what are those key performance indicators? What are your achievements? This is the next thing which they notice. And I'm not going to make it a longer list, just four points or five points probably. The last point is, is about jumps and gaps. How quickly you jump between company to company means what is the length or average length of your job? Are you changing your job every three months, six months, one year, two year? Or you stay four, six year at one job and then move to the other one? Because with this, they want to see how great fit you are for that company and how long you can, if they will hire you, how long you can stay for uh, with that company. So this is the one, two, three, four, five things which I told you length of the CV, your most recent experience, your uh, achievements, your career jumps, and one important thing which I do not want to, the fifth one which I do not want to miss, that is about your relevance. That you, your education, your experience, does it relate to this job, this open position or not? That's very much important. And for that purpose, they will scan different things 
on your CV. For example, they will see which kind of keywords are available. Because if something I want to achieve and I want to find out, I will quickly scan that piece of paper and I'll try to find out definitely those words which are my choice, which are my requirements. So if those words are not there, definitely I, I, will, I will not pick that person. So these are five things that immediately when your CV or resume comes in front of your recruiter, immediately these five things they notice. Here we will go with one minute break. In this break, I will just go through your questions. I will go through your comments if you have anything and then we can move forward. So um, just one more break. If you want to grab a glass of water or something, you can. And then right after 60 seconds, we will start our next part. So here is a question. If you want to impress others, make it complex. And if you want to help others, make it simple. I totally agree with your this comment. The point is this, we want recruiter and job seeker, they work like friends, hands on hands. When I'm talking about hands in hands, it means that both are making life of each other easier. The recruiter's job is to give so much transparent, nicely written job description to the recruit, uh, potential candidates and candidates' job is to write a CV which is so much easy to go through and make a relevance between the job and the candidate's experience. I like your comment. Thank you so much for sharing with me. All right, so we have got some other people who are sending us their uh, greetings. Thank you so much for sending your greetings. Uh, SSD is joining us also, that's amazing. Uh, perfect. We have got some questions also, um, and that I would love to answer by end of the session. Okay, great. So our 60 seconds time is over. Now let's move to the next section. And next section is about mistakes. We are human being and making mistakes, this is so much obvious. In our life, we make mistakes. When we try to write something, we make mistakes, right? Quick, I'll, I'll keep, I will accumulate uh, your questions. Uh, I will accumulate your questions and by end of the session, as I said that, or in next break time, after 15 minutes, I will answer your questions also. So here I'm going to talk about mistakes, which a lot of candidates, when they write their CV, they make these mistakes. And as a father, as an elder, or a senior person, recruiters can immediately notice those mistakes on the CV. And when some mistake we see once in our life, or two eyes, or thrice from someone, we try to help them out. But when this is my job every day to go through 50 CVs or 100 resumes, and majority of the people are making similar kind of mistakes, what I will do, I will just, as a recruiter, I will just get frustrated, I will just get annoyed. And when someone is frustrated, when someone is annoyed, then there are likely very less chances that person is going to help you. There are less chances that person is going to give time to look at your CV and call you for interview. Because psychologically, you people are not coming on the same wavelength. So mistakes which people make, and I don't want you to make, let me talk about those mistakes here. The first mistake is all about too lengthy CV. Your CV is, as I said, that if it is 
so long, no one is going to read it. Or if they want to read it, it will not be having preference. Preference will be given to those ones which are having shorter CVs. So number one, if you have too much information or unnecessary information on your CV, believe me, this annoys the recruiters. This, I'm repeating, this annoys the recruiter. They just get frustrated seeing a lot of people are writing about their gender, that they are male or female. People write about their, uh, uh, their passport number, their father name, or they try to write all qualifications starting from their high school to senior school and then uh, bachelor's degree and master's degree and other courses. So you do not need to put every single possible piece of information on your CV. Your CV, I'm again telling you, and this has been proved over the time, your CV is your marketing document. And your marketing document should be as simple, as shorter, and as to the point as it is possible. The reason is this, you are this time selling something. You want to sell your, some, uh, yourself to your potential employer. You want to tell them that, hey, come on, I'm looking for a job and you're looking for the candidate. Come on, hire me. But why they should hire you? Brief one, all right? So the first thing which people make as a mistake and it annoys the recruiter, that's the length of your CV. That's unnecessary information which is available. As a, if you have worked as a sales manager, most of the people, they do copy paste their job description. They put it on the CV that as a sales manager, these are the activities which I do. And what happens that that takes, for example, 10 lines or 12 lines. So on one page, if 10 to 12 lines, you are having just for one experience and you have got six different experiences in your career. Just imagine you are going to have three to four pages. Who going to read it? No one going to read it. So please focus on this thing, guys. Your CV should be brief or resume. It should be brief. It should be shorter, not one to two pages. Now, how it will happen in the next sections, we are going to talk about it. But it should be short. It should be brief. And that's it. There is no debate on this thing. Let's go to the next thing, which mistake people make and it annoys the recruiter. Spelling and grammar errors. A lot of people, my goodness, I, I really have seen a lot of CVs where people do not take care of spelling and grammars. And this is something, again, second point, which annoys the recruiter. This shows the person is unable to pay attention to detail. This shows that this is your marketing document and you, as a job seeker, you are not in a position to review it before sending. And you expect from the recruiter that they will not only read all your CV, but say, wow, you are an amazing candidate and they will call you and they will give you a job. It's never going to happen. If you have no time for yourself and for your CV, for your career, your resume to review it before sending and make the correction of all the errors, spellings and mistakes of your grammar, then no one gonna take care of you. So please take care of this thing. Third thing is about poor formatting. Poor formatting, using poor color choices, using a lot of tables and charts and graphs and logos and Ah, the list goes and goes and goes on. Yeah, poor formatting. You are using too big fonts. You are just using too small fonts. Big fonts because you want to fill space on your CV. Small fonts because you have a lot of information to show there. I can get. I can guarantee you that this is also one thing that annoys your recruiter. So, again, in the next section of crafting cv we will talk about what it should be the size of your font but it makes them annoyed and people do these mistakes the fourth mistake is preparing one cv 
and sending it to multiple jobs. Someone believed that I'm very much good in sales. And as a salesperson, because I do customer services also, and I'm working in a small company where I take care of companies' operations as well, and I help my boss to recruit people. And now that person is having this mindset that, okay, if I'm going to send my CV for the customer services, for HR assistant, for sales manager, these jobs, my one CV is going to fit everywhere. Absolutely not. It's not going to happen. So do not try to make one CV and send it to different jobs. It will not be shortlisted first by ATS. And secondly, if it will be shortlisted and reach to the hands of a human being, they will simply just put it aside and they will not review it. Right? So one CV for all jobs cannot work. For every single job you have to create or customize a new CV. And the fifth one is either a lot of people miss their information, contact information, or they give wrong. Maybe they have changed mobile number or email ID, or they have lost password of the email ID, but still they're using the same email ID on CV because they prepared it once in their life, thinking that till they will retire, every time they have to use same CV. It, it will not happen. It's not going to happen, honestly, right? So missing contact information or incorrect uh, information. And when I talk about incorrect information here, just I want to highlight one point. That's about lying on your CVs. That also comes under the same title of incorrect information. You try to cheat or lie by giving some information on the CV which actually does not exist. And these things, as a candidate, you might have applied in your life for 20, 30 jobs, 50 jobs, 100 jobs. You might have written your CV two or three times in your life, but your opponent, your HR manager, your recruiter, they every day review hundreds of CVs. They every week or month or a year, they interview thousands of people, thousands of candidates they can immediately notice that this person is lying. So do not lie on your CVs or during the job interviews, right? So here, I'm gonna do my next slide. And after that, I'm gonna give you again one minute break where we will take questions which missed previously in the comment section. Now my next point, according to agenda of today, that is the secret of a winning CV. We have understood few things, the mistakes, what your recruiter wants to see immediately when CV comes in front of them, what should be the length of CV. Now, what is the secret? A lot of people comes to me and tell that, hey, I, I have written a lot of CVs and I send every day 100 CVs, 50 CVs, but I never get a response from the recruiters. People, A lot of people say that, oh, yes, um, I sent a CV. I even went there. I dropped door-to-door -door CVs. I met at an exhibition or a conference or people, recruiters, HR managers. I handed over personally my CV, but there is no response from them. So let's understand in this quick next five minutes that what are, actually 10 minutes is going to be, what are the secrets of writing a winning CV? Number one, it should be short. Shorter CV, higher chances of getting in the hands of a human being and they will read it. Number two, objective. A lot of people write on the top of their CV objective. I'm looking for a career where I can grow myself and I can learn. No one cares about what is your objective. You can change it to a statement, right? You can say it as a personal statement. And your personal statement should be your why. 
that why you feel in two lines or three lines your elevator pitch why you feel you are the best candidate for this job number three of uh, secret of a winning cv is customize it before applying for any job every time spend 5 10 15 20 minutes and customize your cv look there is a there is a no chance if you are sending 100 cvs every day to 100 different jobs zero response it's better to customize it and send to just a 10 or 5 even but there will be likely more chances you will get response for that one number four keywords i mentioned before about ats applicant tracking system applicant tracking system is a computer is a software it just scan words and the words if in your cv are written according to the job description or according to the role then there are likely more chances more number of keywords related to that role means more there are chances it will be it will be selected it will be filtered or shortlisted the next tip in order to make your winning cv that your recruiter will be forced to call you come on i want to interview you i'm impressed by watching your cv and those are your achievements your contribution what value you have brought to your previous organization and if someone asks you hey james or hey um, whatever the name of the person is i want to talk to you about this role of an accountant tell me about yourself so immediately you should have that two three four points in your mind that whenever someone asks you what achievements are what pitch you have to tell to those people and then important thing is your cv is not just a document to sell you but your cv is more a document to give a solution to the problem of your recruiter what's the problem of recruiter or what's the problem of that company you need to answer those things in your cv who cares if a mobile phone is having got loads and loads of feature if that's not fulfilling the requirement of someone so when they advertise they talk about totally about solutions that if you will buy this product this will give you this solution this solution this solution same is about your cv and about your hiring process your buyer is your recruiter your product is you as a candidate your marketing document or collateral is your cv now your cv is going to give the best picture of yourself but related to the requirement of your recruiter only then these are the things which we are trying to align right so between you and your recruiter the linchpin is your cv your document it's a very much important and i always tell to people 20 seconds or even sometimes less than 20 seconds some researchers say that hardly 10 seconds are is the time which recruiters spend in order to review a cv would you like in your life that 10 seconds ruin your career not absolutely not i'm sure so then make that document brief simple to the point short customize it show more achievements and show the picture that why you are a best candidate for this job here we go we have got now 60 seconds break one minute break where i will just pick some question here and after that we will move to the next point of today all right here we go should i make those five points in one page uh r a sazid is asking some question maybe he asked something which just went up let me see here is one question okay here we go uh, the question is 
Kalman Khan is asking, when recruiter is going through a fresher CV, what they want to see there? They want to see that what you are going to bring to that company. Look, as a, as a fresher, there are two options. Either they are hiring you for internship or they are giving you job opportunity. There are likely less chances they will give you job opportunity to a, recruit, uh, to a fresher because they want someone comes with a, some experience of a couple of months. That's why I always tell to freshers to go for your uh, internships, volunteer work, unpaid work. That will be something which you can showcase on your CV. And once you will show that thing on your CV, it means that somehow you are relating yourself to the pain point of your recruiter. Okay, here we go. Abbas says that, gaps due to COVID or education three to five, how to justify? Yes, um, I have this something as a point of my today's conversation, which I'm going to talk by end of this session. So please stay with me. I will definitely answer your question. The next one is so how to compensate the phase work experience for a fresh graduate. Uh, I just answered this question that as a fresh graduate, try to, once you are in the last year of your university, Try to grab any and every possible opportunity of getting a volunteer work, unpaid work, internships, because that will help you to fill the spaces on your CV and showcase that you have good hands on experience on practical work. So here we go. This was our second break. Let's now move to our next section. So um, I appreciate all of you who are conscious about your question so definitely I will come back and we will talk about that thing let's now talk about different sections of a CV and how to craft a great CV which will which will be a winning CV for you look I know that job hunt and especially if you want to get a good job at a great job it starts with making your great CV so if your first step is bad, are not well crafted, are not solid enough to take you further in this journey, likely you will fall again and again. So let me tell you here a few things that which you can learn from today's this session, how you can write a CV. First of all, now imagine and i'm pretty much sure that all of you in your life you might have written a lot of cvs or definitely your cv must be in front of you or it should be in your imagination when i'm telling you so on the cv components i'm talking about first of all on the top of cv you should have your name and your contact information your official proper name not your nicknames it should be uh your email id should be professional one not like the king or prince or charlie or uh, princess or not this kind of but professional email id with your name location just the name of city where you are based in and your contact number mobile number and if you have already your linkedin profile just mention that one only these things should be in your contact information on top is your name and under that city dubai email id contact number and link of linkedin that's it nothing more no father name no nationality no gender no date of birth no uh, uh, passport number no one cares about that you don't need to write about those things the second thing is about your personal statement and as I mentioned that, in your personal statement, what should be there? Your personal statement is a combination of three things. Number one, who you are and who you are defines what you have done previously. What is your passion? And why you feel you are a suitable candidate for this job? And third thing where if you will be given a chance or why you should be given a chance this is the why three things one who you are what you're good at 
and why they should hire you. These are the three things which should be on top of your CV, which is called personal statement. For example, a salesperson can write that, I'm a natural salesperson with consultative sales approach, having 10 years experience working with multinational companies. Two, now here, when I say two, here it goes that how you contributed by achieving 20% extra revenue consistently, manage their top accounts, excited to apply for this role, are excited for this job, are excited to join your company where I can contribute with my experience, with my knowledge and all the expertise. So this is your personal statement. Here we are not talking about objective. A lot of people write about objective, that this is my objective, that I'm looking for a job. No, your recruiter is more interested to understand that what you will bring to that company and by hiring you, what they will get from you. So this is the second thing, personal statement, which you should write under your name. It's very much important. Under that, your key skills are a summary of key skills. You can make two or three columns on your CV and your top skills which you have. But these top skills must be related to the role or job you are applying for. For example, you are applying for the job of human resource manager and you are best at graphic designer. You do not need to write graphic designing there. Or you are applying as a tax consultant or as an accountant but in the same time you are having some skills which are not related to that one no one cares about it you will waste your space on your cv so only write those skills which are very very much according to the job description and which you have also do not just try to fabricate it don't just lie that you have those skills and now how you can understand that from where you will understand which skills should be on the CV. For that purpose, either before applying for the job, go through carefully the job description and highlight the skills which are mentioned there, that what they are looking for. Or if they, you do not have the job description provided where you want to send and you randomly want to send CV to someone, then first of all, keep it in mind that for which role you want to send CV. And secondly, Google that role and then Google its job description of that position. And from there, you can find out different skills which you can use it, right? So top, your personal information, then your career objective, which you should not write, but change it to personal statement, and then is your summary section, summary of your skills. So these are the three things. Now, what keywords you have used in your personal statement as well as on your skills, this will help your CV to uh, pass through ATS, applicant tracking system. Let's move to the next section. Under that, that's going to be your professional work history. It should, as I mentioned in the beginning, that what your employer or recruiter cares more, what immediate things they want to see on your CV, that's about your experience. And experience should be not on the second page or third page, that before that you started to write your certification and education, no. But it's the immediate thing right under the professional summary or professional statement, your skills set under that should be your experience. It is called your experience is the heart of your CV. Without heart, our body cannot work. Without experience, your CV cannot survive. So do you care about this thing? And for each section, what you should write about experience, name of the company, location, what was your role, and under that, in two lines, you can write briefly that what you achieved at this company, and under that, you can write 
three to four lines that what were your responsibilities there. Nothing more. Each job experience should not be more than six to seven lines. That's more than enough. And please do understand, if you have already 20 years, 25 years experience, you do not have to write same detail for all those jobs which we have done 20 years before. You got my point? So as you will go towards the past, you can make that shorter and shorter and shorter. But do focus on your immediate job where you are working right now or the previous one to two jobs. But it should not be more than six to seven lines. And focus should be there on achievements, rather responsibilities. And when you write it, please remove this word which directly you have taken from your job description provided by the company that I'm responsible for this, responsible for this, responsible for this. For example, as a salesperson, you're responsible for lead generation, but you can play a little bit with these words and you can write that I generated 500 leads per month, which is 20% extra to the previous month, right? So something it shows that you generated leads but in the same time, you have there some numbers, some figures that you achieved something there. You got my point? Great. So like this, you will complete your section of experience. After that, you will go for your education. Best is to last our most recent two education. That says your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, or your master's degree, uh, or your uh, bachelor's degree, and plus your higher secondary school, or if you have done any other professional qualification, that's more than enough. You do not need to write detailed, starting from school, then higher secondary school, then bachelor's degree, then master's, then MPhil, then PhD, and blah, blah. You do not have to write all those things. Be brief. And if you are a fresh graduate, you do not have any experience before and you want to showcase how great you are at studies, you can write what were your grades. But if you are a veteran, you are an experienced person, you do not need to mention that what were your scores or grades or A plus and all those things. No one cares about it. At that stage, people care more that what is your practical experience. Here, let's pick some quick questions and then we will move to the next section of this one. On my CV is Sunday, ATS fails, but it. Mistake on. Please guide in this situation. What should I do? Can you please explain this question? What do you mean by this? 31st, 12, 2017 on my CV is Sunday. Uh, what, what exactly is this question? It will be great if you can explain a bit more and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. All right, before we run out of time, let's quickly move to next point. That's about CV customization. As I mentioned in the beginning, that always you need to spend some time before sending it to your recruiter or applying for any job. Make your target of just five jobs to apply every day instead of applying 50 jobs or 100 jobs. But every five of those jobs, your CV should be optimized and customized. Now, let me tell you what is the meaning of optimization and what's the meaning of customization. Customization means tailored. Tailored means that according to the requirements, according to the requirements. So you need to understand what is the need of recruiter, what is their requirement, what skill set they are looking for, what experience they are looking for, what type of person can be ideal for this job. And according to that, just add it to your CV before sending. You don't need to create one CV and send for every single job. It will just frustrate you. You will never get response of that thing. Secondly, optimization means that you have to add keywords on your CV 
which are the keywords of choice of your recruiter. For example, for salesperson, what could be possible choice of words? It could be sales, business development, account management, revenue, profits, right? So similar is bad for the account person, accounts, profits, balance sheets, uh, some accounting standards. So these are the different keywords. Same is about the project management. Same is about uh, if you are from the medical industry, there must be some keywords which are which you can pick from the job description and inject on different places while you are writing your personal statement you are adding your skills you are writing about your experience inject those keywords there it will help your cv to get shortlisted immediately next thing is and for that, I have given you a cheat sheet that simply you can go to your uh, Google and you can search that job description of that role. You can highlight those keywords and what skills they are looking for and bring and inject that in your CV. Next thing is, let someone review. First, once you complete your CV, review yourself. And after that, it will be great if you will ask someone, one of your colleague to review your CV right it will definitely give you an another aspect that how people are going to look at your cv so customization i can stress and talk all the day on this point that you need to customize optimize your cv before sending otherwise you will come back to me asking again and again and again same thing that oh my goodness i have sent hundreds of cv and then i don't get response of that you will never get because you have made one CV and you are throwing this CV to everywhere for every possible job opportunity, thinking that you will get it, but it will just make you frustrated and you will be failed to get that one. Now I want to tell you something about CV formatting because we have lesser time now remaining. So I want to take your questions also. CV formatting. In the beginning, I mentioned that your CV should be plain. If it is a plain CV, used plain text, no charts, graphs, boxes, it will be easy to be handled by applicant tracking software. ATS can read only text. If you have worked for ABC company, write the name ABC company instead of creating or putting their logo there. If you'll add logo of the company, it will not be read by the applicant tracking system and they cannot identify it. Second thing is, do not please use blue, red, green, yellowish, orange, different purple colors on your CV. It should be in black. Black is the best one. No colors, only black. No boxes, no logos, no tables. Use 12 font, 12. One, two. This is the size of font which you can use. 11 or 12. Calvary and Arial are the best fonts which you can use. It's easy to read when it comes in front of someone. Make your all the CV when you are writing. Make it in a paragraph shapes. Like after every section, there is a small space so that easily it could be identified that there is a gap to the next one and to the next one. For example. After the statement, personal statement, leave a little space and then, or one line space, and then write your skills. Then one line space and then go for your experience. So that a person who wants to read that, easily they can identify which section starts from where and it ends where. I'm again telling you, if you will make the life of your recruiter easier, it will be there will be more chances your CV will be shortlisted. If your CV will make their life difficult to read it and find out key information, they will not call you, they will not shortlist your CV. You do not need to put your gender, you are male or female. You do not, don't, don't need to put your date of birth. You don't need to put about your political or religious beliefs on your CV. If you have done in the past any volunteer work that will be great thing to add on your cv if there is space 
because that will show that how how best you are and how do you understand the corporate social responsibilities so companies want to hire such kind of people who are more happy to be a human rather than robots so this was all about how to write your cv now i need to answer some of the question here and here is few people ask the similar question about your uh, asking about fresher how freshers can let's talk about this thing because we do mention from learning outcome of today that how to handle gaps and how freshers can get job so you are a fresher you do not have any other experience and you don't know how to make a cv first of all don't try to make two pages three pages cv just focus on single page secondly remain within the limits of standard cv do not try to make your font size or other things or headings bigger or make just border of your cv in order to fill the space but as i mentioned when you are on the last year of your university try to get any unpaid job volunteer work or internships and if you will get after three months six months two or three different kind of internships go for that one like this you will have something to put on that cv that along with your education where definitely you will be amazing what you have gained or learned practically from different organizations you got my point so that's the important point and then talk about what skills you have then talk about if you have attended some additional workshops or courses and these all things whether to get a experience you can do any online work even to get some additional knowledge and skills you can get some any uh, any of online courses you can attend i have a lot of mine courses available on udemy and other platforms you can take my courses and you can mention there it will showcase that not only you have finished your university in a good way but in the same time you are conscious to gain practical exposure plus you are conscious to upgrade yourself that you took this decision to go for these extra courses so mention those things on your cv and then the best thing is your why that as a fresh blood why they should hire you i i can guarantee that every person is having their own why everyone's having their own strengths that why they should be hired so keep it keep that thing in mind that why they should hire you now the next thing is about some people are asking about how to handle gaps like these days as we are moving forward having gaps on cvs this is becoming normal your employer or recruiter is not concerned that you didn't have a job due to covid or you lost your previous job and now why this is the gap but they want to understand that when you had that gap what you done during that time so if for example someone lost job on 15th of march 2020 due to covid until now he didn't get a job and he's looking for a job in one and a half year what you done so there could be possible options that you went for some extra education there could be option that you went for multiple workshops and training sessions there could be option that during this one and a half year you done some volunteer work to help society there could be option that you have done some part time work during this time so that you are not only earning something but in the same time you are having some experience and you are relevant to the industry so the point is gaps are not bad unless you have something to fill that gaps looks bad only in that case when you have nothing to fill there so i would tell and advise every one of you who is concerned about this thing that what you should talk about your career gaps during the job interview or during your uh, while you are crafting your cv the most important thing is and i believe that's that's uh, something i will stress once again think 
what is the mindset of recruiter? Recruiter honestly doesn't care that what you've done in that time. But recruiter does care this thing that during that period, what you've done and how you have become a better person as compared to a year before. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this session. This was end from my side. And now floor is open. Anyone who wants to join me on the call, you have link already. You can come. I can help you to enter in the room and you can ask your live question. One person is already here. And after that, we can pick one by one your questions also. So let's see who is with me at this moment. Shujat. Hi, Shujat, are you with me? Shujat, are you with me? Can you hear me? It looks like either the call is dropped or Shujat is unable because his mic is still mute. So Shujat, if you are hearing me, you can rejoin so that you can ask your question. Now, quickly, I will go and I'll pick randomly some questions. But in the same time, you can ask me any and every question by contacting me over LinkedIn or if you have email ID, which is my email ID is contact c o n t a c t at m a s o h a i l dot com this is my email id where i'll be happy to answer all of your questions so my project ended on 31st 12 2017 but ats do not accept as it is sunday look abbas uh, why it is will not accept if it is any date if someone born on this date if someone started job in this date if someone ended job on this date why they will not accept this thing this is a this is a bit surprise uh, that you say that and how you came to know about this thing that ats will not accept or is not accepting this thing let's do one thing because this question might require any detailed answer from my side. Feel free to get in touch with me on LinkedIn or as I given my email ID, which I can just write here on screen also. Uh, feel free, you can drop me a message. Okay, in the meantime, here is a question is asking, how can I get it, sir? What exactly you are looking for? If your question is not complete, I'm not be able to, gonna be able to answer any question. Here is some feedback. Mahboob says that he's glad to be here. Thank you so much. It's my honor to have you, and I hope this session was helpful for you. Uh, Amin Amin Nur Rahim asking the same question is looking for something, but please, whenever you drop a question, send a complete question. Okay. Next is. What it would be the personal statement for fresher? That's a very important thing. Fresher comes with their career aspirations. They are having something which is called a passion. That what you want to do and why you want to do. For example, if you have studied medical, so you want to write your personal statement. You need to see what is the job you are applying for what you enjoyed when you were studying your medical and what is your personal belief your personal values right so you have to mix that and you need to make those statements right and as i said that there should be three things one your past your past is here is your education then your personal value and passion why you are into this and third well what value you can bring for the company where you are applying that job. I believe I have answered this question. I believe answered this question of gaps also. Uh, let's see if there is any other question. Thank you so much, brother, for joining. I appreciate your feedback. Here is a question. Okay, we have talked about this already. Here is a question. Okay, this we already talked about it. Perfect. So from my side, this was all about 
writing a great CV and answering all of your questions, I believe once again, strongly I believe that if you will come back whenever you have to write a CV and watch this video available on my YouTube channel, as many times you will watch, every time you will learn more and more things. And first of all, go step by step. First of all, make your CV shorter. Secondly, remove all the mistakes which usually people make on their CV. Number three, focus on those three things which recruiters immediately see when you have a CV, uh, when they have your CV in front of them. Let's start with these three steps. And if any one of you want me to personally review your CV, once again, as I said that, feel free, you can send me your email. I'm just going to mention here. And I'll be more than happy to free review your CV and give you my feedback. So this is my email ID. My name is Atnan Sohail, a learning and career advisor based in Dubai. In the last 12 years of my career, I have genuinely helped over 8,000 individuals. Help them how to find out a job, help them how to choose best career options, help them to find how they can upgrade and professionally develop themselves. And it will be my pleasure to help you people also. You can Google me on uh, Google, of course, or you can go simply on Udemy. There you can find my different courses. And if you are interested to learn more about job and career, feel free to get in touch with me on LinkedIn or you can subscribe my YouTube channel, which is with my name, Adnan Sohail, where you can find loads and loads of videos which will help you in your career. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me in this evening from Dubai. Um, I wish you all the best in your career and uh, goodbye for today.